Good morning, Help Club. We're back together again. Um, sorry, I'm a little tardy. It's actually not not normal of me to be tardy. <laughs> I'm a late person by nature, but I try to get on here, you know, to honor everybody's time. Um, my husband is working from home, and so he is taking the space that I usually use to do these videos. And then my kids were all inside. And I just knew last time I did a video, they kind of barged in. And so I needed to find a new spot today. So this is my new spot. You're joining me outside. I live in uh, Mesa, Arizona. And so um, it's actually a really, really beautiful morning here. The birds are chirping. Um, like the sun is perfect. It's like, it's just wonderful. So for all of you living in the cold, I'm really sorry right now. <laughs> um, I am really excited to talk about today and actually I had to wake up this morning and keep learning and keep reading and keep figuring out uh, what I wanted to say today um, because today was kind of so I, I was trying to not um, you know get into I didn't want to go like too crazy deep with you guys today you know but I wanted to represent uh, what happened today really well and I was having a really hard time doing that there's so much good stuff packed in and heavy stuff and um, so I I think I have come to you today with what God has laid on my heart to share and hopefully um, on this holy Tuesday um, we can all just kind of take a minute to think about you know just what this week represents that this, and as I was reading and as I was learning, I was just thinking, this is a heavy week. It is a heavy week. Everything that Jesus was doing uh, leading up to his death was so important and so big. And um, and so I just want us to kind of like go into this time thinking about it in that way. Um, and also just remembering that he is this gracious, loving God who did all these things. The heaviness of this week is because what he did represents something so life-changing that we get to have eternal life and we are not separated from God because of what he did on the cross. And so um, as we're thinking about that today, um, just let those reminders just settle into your heart. Um, know that Jesus loves you. Know that everything that he, that he did was a part of his bigger plan to, um, to restore humanity and his bigger plan bigger plan to to come back and to rescue us once again and so um so yeah so before we go any further i just want to pray would you guys pray with me lord thank you so much for today god we pray that we will remember what holy tuesday represents um all the things that happened in in this day today all those hundreds of years ago um were not a mistake you ordained each and every one. You knew that each and everything was going to happen and you had a very carefully uh, planned out way you were going to go about it. You knew what you wanted to say to your disciples and to your people before you left. Um, you carefully formulated each parable, each story that we're going to hear about today so that it would stay in the hearts of your people. And so God, I pray that as we sit here all these years later, um, that they would that the meaning of your true intent of, of when you were saying that and why you were saying it uh, would sink really deep into our hearts today. We thank you for this time. Thank you for every single mom who's watching, maybe dad's watching, maybe kids watching. God, I pray that you would just touch each and every heart today and that we would be changed because of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's get into just like a minute of fun. Tell me if you're here, say hello and tell me where you're watching from. I want to know who's watching and where you're watching from. Um, and okay, Deb is here. I see you, Deb. You look beautiful. What a beautiful day. Thank you. And um, it is a beautiful day. Um, I had to do some, you know, mom uh, dry shampoo in my hair because <laughs> it was not getting washed today. And so I am thankful today for dry shampoo. Um, okay, but tell me where you're watching from. I want to make sure I'm not missing a thing. Okay. All right. Well, let's just jump right in. I have a lot of notes and I'm going to be looking at them today. So just don't hold that over me. Um, I would never be able to remember everything I want to tell you today. Okay. So Holy Tuesday. So 
I'm gonna give you a super small recap of what was going on on this day. So, oh, Gabby, hi, yay. Oh, you love the palm tree. I know, I, I had to get it in the, in the picture. At first it was just the backside of my house, which was not very interesting, but that was much better. <laughs> um, so the recap of what was happening on Holy Tuesday is that Jesus and his disciples uh, are returning to the temple and they teach the people tons of things with parables and they give the people a new commandment. Um, they're basically raining down wisdom. Jesus is raining down wisdom to his people on this day through all these parables and stories. And so um, I'm, I'm wanting to make sure I don't forget something. Okay, so Jesus is really on a rescue mission. Hi, Danita, yay, and Carol watching from San Antonio, Danita Houston, lovely to have you here. Okay, so, but he is on a rescue mission. He is on the rescue of God's people from the people who are oppressing them, the people who are making their religion into what they think, um, or, or into a religion that's that's not true, that's not real, that's not of the true God. And so, you know, Jesus this week, he is just on this rescue mission to save his people and to um, not have any separation between him and his people. And so I really had to slow down, like I said, and ask the Lord what he wanted me to say and what I should share with you today. And there really wasn't one clear point to me. Um, so yesterday, Deb talked about Jesus cleansing the temple. And after that, the Pharisees were just basically after Jesus. And they were wondering, what right do you have to do all these things that you are doing? Uh, and who are you, basically? Who are you? Who do you think you are? Um, and they wanted to challenge him on it. And not only did they want to challenge him on it, but they wanted to trap him. So, you know, in the stories, if you read this part of scripture, it talks about how they're, they're asking him these things and they're trying to, they're trying to put him in, pin him into a spot so that he can say, um, that he had divine power from God. Because if he said, well, I have divine power from God, then that was means, um, to get to, say that he is blasphemous, which is not a good thing back then. Um, and, and blasphemy is basically, you know, whenever we, we talk in Christian terms, I think it's really hard Christianese they say. So I want to tell you what is blasphemy. It's profane talk about religious or sacred things. And so, um, they would consider that blasphemy. And so that could get, even get him arrested. So they were trying to trap him and say, who do you think you are? And asking them these specific questions so that he could say, well, I am God and I have divine power from God. But Jesus is so smart and he's so wise and he's so clever and he wasn't falling into any of their traps. And so he was basically asking them questions and re rebuttaling their questions with questions. And well, if you can't answer that, then I can't answer yours. And he was just going down this other path. And so he couldn't, he couldn't be accused. And so that's kind of one of the first thing that happens is that he, they were challenging who he was as God, challenging his deity, challenging who do you think you are? Do you think that you are God? And, and what makes you think that you are God, you know? And so that's kind of the first major thing to happen. And Jesus is having to kind of stick up for himself in a way, but I don't think that he's scared. <laughs> he is God and he knows exactly what to say and he knows exactly what words to use. Um, but they definitely wanted to get him. And, you know, I have to say that reading over all this stuff this week has really convicted me. It's really made me think, um, who do I think God is? And is God only um, good and powerful and and wonderful when I am in the right circumstances? Um, or is God who he is all the time, no matter what is going on in my life? And so really, as I was thinking about them asking, who do you think you are? Um, in a way, I turned it inward and thought, who do I think God is? And who do I want him to be that maybe isn't who he really is? Um, and so I imagine Jesus at this point was just a, under a lot of pressure. You know, this week was very heavy because Jesus was fully human. And I had to think about it for me. I had to say, all right, if this was turned around and people were after me, they were hoping I was going to say the wrong thing so that they could s snatch me up. You know, they could persecute me. They could show me, um, you know, who they thought I really was, you know, and, and, trapped from all sides. That would be really scary. And so it talks a lot in these passages about Jesus needing to go and pray 
And I think he prayed a lot because he had a lot of pressure on him. He was human. He was human just like us and he had a lot of pressure on him. And so I really, I, I, I want us to remember that part too, because sometimes we think of it, you know, when he was on this earth, he was doing miracles. He was doing all these amazing things. But then at the same time, he was also fully human, experiencing human emotions and human um, limitations about, you know, just being, feeling drained, feeling tired, um, feeling probably pinned down and making sure he's doing the right thing. And, um, and so I, I just imagine him being in that place and it just really makes him that much more relatable to me. Um, and the second thing that was happening on this day, big thing was that they were trying, like I was saying to discredit his power. So not only were they questioning who he was and why he thought he was God, but they were trying to discredit his power. And Basically, from that point, when they couldn't pin him down, when they when he they couldn't get the answer that they wanted out of him, they were on a mission, and their mission was to get rid of Jesus of Nazareth. Whatever means possible, they were going to make it happen. And so everybody was against him. And I can't imagine how, like this part, how heavy that must have felt. Like, okay, you thought it was bad before, now it's going to get way worse. Um, and they joined forces even with their enemies okay, to take Jesus down. So people that they wouldn't normally associate with, people they normally wouldn't do any business with, they were rounding them up and saying, hey, do you believe in this Jesus guy? No? Okay, great. Let's take him down together. And so they were taking him down um, together and they were on this mission. And so, you know, for a second, just imagine that feeling. What if everybody was against you? Truly, you absolutely knew it 100%. You weren't just being skeptical, you know, the people of the world, but you knew absolutely that everybody was against you and how that might feel. Um, okay, so in my opinion, it looked to me like maybe Jesus had had enough at that point. He was like, all right, you know what? I wasn't speaking out before. I'm going to speak out now. And so he did. He, he had to speak up and he wanted to tell um, these religious leaders of the time that their religion was backwards, that what they were doing was backwards. Like, Hey, you think that you're doing the right thing and worshiping the true God. I'm the, I am the true God. I'm here. I'm the Messiah. I am here in the flesh standing right before you and you don't see it. And what you're doing at your religious services is not right. And it's not what you should be doing. This is not the heart of God. This is not. So Jesus is speaking out against them. He's, a, he's addressing their false religion and practices. And then he kind of ended his whole time of response, basically um, condensing the entire list of the Ten Commandments into two commandments. And this is kind of where we um, get that these are the two greatest commandments. And maybe, I wrote this down, maybe we all need to hear this today because we get so I think as people, we get so caught up in details, right? We, we, we want to think about all the things and make sure we're doing all these different things, right? And God is even condensing it down and saying, um, love the Lord, your God. So he, this is what he told them, love the Lord, your God and love others who are made in his image. And so I just think it's kind of beautiful that in his defense, he is just reminding them and not just defense, but even in his, he's trying to set things right and set things straight. He's saying, this is what's important. This is the stuff that's important. Love the Lord your God and love all of those who are made in his image. And if I can, so I am not a Bible scholar at all. Okay. I've just been doing a lot of different research and trying to find out different things. And so, um, I'm, I'm working on opinions here, but I think that one of, one of the saddest parts that happened on this day is that just the feeling that God had of Israel losing their faith. You know, it's like if, if, if you were building something and you were charged to build something and you as the, as the master, um, builder, you put a bunch of, of people in charge and they decide and you, you went away and you thought, okay, they're going to build this thing up and they're going to do it the right way. I, I laid out these specific instructions for them. I told them exactly what to do. Um, you know, I gave them the pitfalls. This is what could happen. Do this in that case. Um, I gave them everything they needed to build this thing perfectly. And then you came back 
and they thought, you know what, I, you had some good plans and we had a couple of things that we thought were a good idea and we did most of those, but we're just leaving out some of this stuff. We don't like that part. And those were some of the hard things. Those were some of the most important pieces to you, the most important bits that, that needed to happen in your building, in your construction, in your plan, and you missed them. And you didn't just miss them, but you blatantly went against them. And I think that that is a part of, of God's feeling of like, this was not what I had intended. And so, so the people of Israel were, were making their own, their own religion, their own way that they wanted to go about believing and, and, um, and trusting. And so what happened was they ended up kind of losing their faith in a way they, they doubted, they, they were duped and many were, were faithless. You know, they were stuck in this, in this religion that wasn't actually about Jesus. And just not being able to re recognize Jesus as God was the biggest tragedy of all. You know, God came down and he he performed miracles. He did the things that people were begging and asking for the God of the universe to come down and do. And they were still like, mm, I don't think so. It's not you. <laughs> and so, um, you know, that is the tragedy in the whole thing is that God really did map out a way for his people and they really went against it. And so, so at this point, I think his disciples, where are you from? I'm in Mesa, Arizona. Um, so I think at this point, his disciples are going like, whoa, Jesus, what's going on here? And so the disciples are wondering, so what's next? You're talking about all this stuff. You're talking about how, um, you know, this isn't what you, this isn't what you had had planned basically. And that everything is going to be destroyed. This temple that people have built is going to be destroyed. Um, this temple that is supposed to honor you is going to be taken down. And I want to talk about the temple because Jesus was talking this whole time in scripture about Hey, when I go, this temple is going to be destroyed. This thing that you have you have spent years upon years. I think it was like when I read it, like about a hundred years building, and it was supposed to be one of the most beautiful temples that you've ever seen. So people took really careful time to build this beautiful thing, and Jesus is, keeps talking about it being destroyed. And the disciples are like, "Why are you going to destroy it?" And so, uh, and and what are the signs of the end of the of these times like you're talking about how do we know what's happening and they're just filled with questions for Jesus what are you saying what does this mean for us what do we do how are we going to know and so they're getting really worked up and so basically after that in Matthew 24 and 25 if you go and read your bible go read Matthew 24 and 25 it's filled with parables okay and it's a ton of practical lessons for those living at the time um, that we can glean, glean wisdom from today uh, to be faithful, watchful, and prepared. Okay, that is Jesus' main mission. That is where I'm headed with this whole, everything I've been talking about. Jesus is saying, look, the end of this time is coming. I am going to come. I'm going to tear down what you think is true and what you think is right. I'm going to put everything in place that needs to be put in place to take these, these religious leaders down that are oppressing you and telling you the wrong information, the wrong way to live your life, the wrong way of doing things. And I'm going to set the record straight and I'm going to make this right. And so he talks in parables and he taught in those parables, he talks about being faithful, watchful and prepared. And so I want to talk about what is a parable, okay? People, I, I wouldn't have known years ago what a parable was. And so a parable is a simple story used to illustrate a moral or a spiritual lesson. And so I, I read in this one commentary, it described this way, but it's like, talk about like, uh, it's kind of like being at school, okay? And your teacher gives you a list of four or five things that you need to come up with a story about. Okay, so maybe they'll give you a main character, maybe his job and what he does, and three or four objects you have to work into the story. <laughs> and, you know, you have to come up with this thing. The disciples sometimes felt, I think, that that's how it was. Like, what is this story saying? <laughs> what are you trying to get across? But Jesus knew that a great way to help us to remember his teachings was to teach 
a story, to tell them a story, and to make sure that they were, um, that they could have something that they could tell their kids and they their kids could tell their kids and it was going to be the spiritual lesson that could be passed on and i i think even in in life right now we we really hang on to stories we remember books that we read we remember stories that people tell us that we may not remember exactly what they told us about but we can remember the story that they were telling us about them and so that's just the value of all these parables and all the ways he was trying to impart wisdom to his disciples and so um I, so it, hold on, let me, let me gather my thoughts real quick. Okay. So in these parables, he was talking about the destruction of the temple, that that was going to happen. He was talking about this, about his second coming, that he was going to come again, that he was going to die, that things were going to be destroyed, that Israel was going to be on a really rough path, um, after all this happened and that, um, and that no one knows when he's going to return. So when I was talking about before, we need to be um, watchful. We need to be faithful. We need to be prepared. He was really talking in these parables about that we don't know when he is coming back. It says in one of them, there will be two workers in a field and one will disappear. You know, stories like that, parables like that are what he was saying to warn his people to not lose their faith or become complacent. Don't fall asleep that we need to be patient, that we always need to be ready to know, um, ready, watching, listening, praying, um, thinking about the things of God. And so the whole symbolism of the temple being destroyed, I'm gonna, this is the last part I'm going to say about this, um, is that after Jesus, when the temple was destroyed, that was the thing that separated his people from being able to have direct communication with him, okay, was the temple. It was this thing that stood in the way. And so Jesus wanted to rip that out and say, there is no separation now for the people who believe in me. I am doing this thing. I'm going to die on the cross and I am going to be resurrected on the third day. I'm going to defy the laws of nature, the laws of life, and I am going to come alive and I'm going to destroy this thing that separates direct communication between us, that separates um, even how we go to heaven. You know that now we get to believe in Jesus and that we get to have eternal life because of what he did. And so that is so, so wonderful. I'm going to read this part. Okay. If, if this is my little commentary that I use. This is um, N.T. Wright. I really love his stuff. And so if you're looking for a way to study the Bible, I really, really love this. Um, but just this is one little bit about the temple. And it comes from Luke 21, um, verses 5 and 6. And it says, Some people were talking about the temple, saying how wonderfully it was decorated with its beautiful stones and dedicated gifts. Yes, said Jesus, but the days will come when everything you see will be torn down. Not one stone will be left standing on another. Um, okay, so after this, he, he continues talking about parables. He continues talking about making sure that we are standing firm in our faith. And I want to talk about this really quick as moms. What are we, what are we supposed to do about this as moms? Okay, I'm going to read you another little piece here. Um, Luke... Just bear with me, guys. I told you that this one was a big one today. Okay, this is Luke 21, verses 34 through 38. It says, So pray for yourselves, said Jesus, that your hearts may not grow heavy with dissipation and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that the day comes upon you suddenly like a trap. The day that he's talking about is the day that he comes back. It will come, you see, on everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Keep awake at all times praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that will happen and to stand before the Son of Man. Jesus was teaching in the temple by day, but at night he went out and stayed in the place called the Mount of Olives. And from early morning, all the people flocked to him in the temple to hear them. So then my last little bit I'm going to read to you is this little part right here, and, and it talks about... This is kind of our charge. This is our mission. This is what we need to be thinking about. This is what we need to be doing right now because of this day so long ago in history. And it says, the answer is the same for us as it was for the Jerusalem Christians nearly a generation after Jesus. Keep alert. 
This is what you were told to expect. Patience is the key. Pray for strength to keep on your feet. There are times when your eyes will be shutting with tiredness, spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical, and when you will have to prop them open. <laughs> I love that illustration. This is what it's about. Not an exciting battle with adrenaline flowing and banners flying. So our Christian life is not about just adrenaline, banners flying, all the flair, but the steady tread of prayer and hope and scripture and sacrament and witness day by day <clears throat> and week by week. This is what counts. This is why patience is a fruit of the spirit. So when he's talking about, we don't know the hour that he's coming back. We don't know what's going to happen. He's telling us, if you don't know, stay alert and stay aware. Keep praying. Keep your faith. Make sure that you know that you're in it for the long haul. This is not short. And what I really had to think about was kind of what I talked about in the beginning. Is my faith circumstantial? Is my faith, is my belief in God, is my belief in who he is? and what he's doing in my life, and, and the goodness, is he good? Does that only depend on if my circumstances are good? But when things are unsure, and I'm feeling a little bit um, anxious, or I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling down, does my whole view of God change? You know, does it change for me, his deity and who he is? Do we think, oh, well, you know, things are going good, Okay, well, God must not be on my side. Things must not be going for me. I love that in that passage, it talked about that your Christian life is not about the flair. It's not about the feeling that you are in this massive battle and you have all these things going on and it feels victorious and it feels amazing all the time. That is just not reality and it's not life. And so as we think about our Christian walk and our Christian faith and we think, how do I want to be? Well, God is telling us very, very blatantly, he's saying, Stay the course, be patient, be steadfast, be in prayer, read your Bible, immerse yourself in scripture, do all of these things because you don't, I, just like I came back and I came to earth and I did this thing, I died on the cross and I rose on the third day for you, for your sins, for the things that you would do. He's saying, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do it again. That's what he was saying. He was talking in the parables about his second coming. He was, he was saying, this is going to happen. And so it has to be real to us. We have to be thinking, what does this mean for me? And what am I going to do about it? And what we're going to do about it is while we're in this whole time of trying to figure out this, this COVID-19 and, or, or take it beyond that. Okay. Not this sickness is going to come and it's going to go. It's go, It has an ending. Everybody, the sickness has an ending. And so as it, as it goes, and as the next thing hits us, the next circumstantial thing that shakes our faith, that makes us unsure, that makes us uneasy, that makes us anxious. We need to be thinking, what are we going to do about it? We are going, we're not going to lose our faith. We're not going to let these things shake us. We are going to be steadfast in prayer. And I wanted to tell you one thing. Keep teaching your children about the Lord, even if you don't know what to say. Even if you have no idea what you're talking about, open up your Bible and read to them scripture. At night before they go to bed, read scripture to them. Um, even if you don't even understand what you're reading about, God is in the business of changing hearts. And so if you read scripture to your kids, you talk to them about what you're learning about. Talk to them about God. Talk to them about the sky. Talk to them about, look at today. Look at this wonderful, beautiful day. Look what God did. Remind our kids that God is alive, that he is real, that he is present, that he is working, and that he's in everything. And it is going to encourage them as little disciples to go out and to do his work because none of us know when he is coming. And so if we are training our minds to be in this for the long haul, we're not going to be shaken by our circumstances. We're not going to be shaken about what's going on in our life. God is always the same. He's never changing. He is always, always for us. And so as we're thinking about that, teach your kids about it. That's what it means for us as moms. Teach your kids about what you're learning. And then first and foremost, be learning. Be submerged in the word. Um, <clears throat> and the devil would love, he would love for us to fall asleep. He would love for us to become complacent. He would love for, for the things of this world that get us upset. He would love for us 
to, to have those things drag us down. He would love for our faith to get cold and silent. And so you, you know, as, as we take this charge from Jesus, he's saying, don't be silent. Don't be complacent. Don't be quiet. Um, don't. And, and the other thing what, what we do is we don't, we, we, a lot of times don't want to think about the, the ways of God or the things of God, or maybe what he has for us. We go to blogs, we go do a, a Google search online. We don't go to the source of peace. We don't go to the one who created us, who knows us, who understands our longings, who understands our sadness, who understands our circumstances better than anybody else. We don't go to him. We go to all these other places and we stay distracted. And when we stay distracted, it keeps us complacent in our faith. Our faith can't grow. It just stays. It stays at some level that, that is not helping us. And that and God wants to help us and he wants to comfort us and he wants to be there for us. And so if we don't even go to the source, if we're not even going to him, you guys, this day, this whole day was about him breaking the barrier and saying, you don't have to go to some priest. You don't have to go to somebody in order to talk to me. I'm right here. You can talk to me any minute of the day, any time of the day. You can talk to me when you're happy. You can talk to me when you're sad. You can talk to me when you're mad. You can talk to me any time because I tore down the very thing that separated us. And so we need to be taking advantage of that. And we need to be Christians that are not shaken. And we need to be spending time with the Lord so that he can work on our hearts and root this deep, deep faith in us that will not be shaken by anything. And so um, I... I think I have one more thing to say. Okay. So a couple points. I want you to remember God is bigger than coronavirus. He's bigger. Okay. So if you're feeling nervous about that, um, don't forget you can lean on him, that you can trust him and in, in, trust him in this time. And um, a personal story that I'm going to end with is a couple of weeks ago, I was feeling really, I was feeling kind of down. Um, just like, I think it was all the stuff had just happened with all the sickness coming out and I was just feeling uneasy and I started reading. Okay. I just started, I was do, I was the Google person. Okay. I just started Googling what's happening now. How many cases are there? What's going on? And then I would kind of take a break and then I go back to it. And then it was like, it was taking a toll on me though. And I was so, and I wasn't exactly like super worried. It was that my mind was so, so distracted. And I remember sitting there one day just thinking like, oh, I just, I just don't feel good. I feel gross. I feel, I just, I feel like this level of anxiousness, this level of anxiety. And, and God totally was like, knock, knock, knock. <laughs> hey, Crystal, I'm here. Do you want to come talk to me about any of this stuff? Do you want to spend some time with me? And I remember hearing that very clearly. And I'm just going to be so honest with you guys. I was like, don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to do that right now. I'm not in the mood. I don't know if I'm in the mood to open up my Bible and read it right now. I'm not really in the mood to pray. I'm not in the mood. And so I, I, kind of, I rejected his loving invitation that I felt very clearly to come and spend time with him. Well, the next morning I woke up and I felt the nudge again. Go spend time with God. And so... I did. So I listened and I went and spent time with the Lord. And let me tell you what, every single thing that I was feeling, the ways I was feeling anxious, um, just the nervousness that I was feeling about just changes and feeling sad for people, you know, and that hasn't gone away because there's a lot of sadness happening right now. But I will tell you that he put my heart at peace and it wasn't something profound that I read. It wasn't some like holy revelation that came upon me. It was nothing beyond the fact that I was just spending time in God's presence. That was it. I don't know what I read that day. I don't know what he told me that day. I, I can't even tell you what it was, but I knew that a change had happened in my heart because I had spent time with him. And so if you are sitting here today and you're like me and you were feeling nervous or you're feeling depressed, you're feeling sad, you're feeling um, uneasy about just days to come, go 
sit in the presence of Jesus, sing worship songs to him, sing worship songs, put them on in your car, put them on in your house right now and have your Bible open all the time. And as you pass by, just read a scripture, read one, one little scripture and and think about memorizing it for the day. When you become anxious, decide you're going to, you're going to memorize a verse. And every single time that that anxious thought pops in your mind, you are going to say that verse out loud. Okay, so that is my charge to us as believers today. We are not going to fall asleep. We are going to stay faithful. We are going to stay trusting in the God who loves us and the God who made a way for us. And circumstances just and and just like the temple, you guys, just like the temple, he destroyed the temple. This beautiful thing that people held in high regard. This was it. This was beautiful. This was the thing. You know what I mean? Like this was the way to God. God was like in a day that is going to be destroyed. That will be no more. I am going to destroy it. So whatever it is in your mind that you are holding up, this is the thing. This is the thing that has to be this way because look, it's great and it's beautiful and it's perfect and it's wonderful. And this is the thing. This is what it has to be for me. Whatever that thing is in your life, remember that God, he is the one. He doesn't want anything to be getting in the way of us and him. So if there's something in your life right now that is preventing you from being with him and sitting in his presence and standing near him, he wants to get rid of that. And that also that we we need to lean on absolutely nothing else in this world except for Jesus. That's it. And so, um, okay, I'm going to go before I probably keep you guys here for like another 45 minutes. <laughs> but um, I hope that you gleaned a few things today from Holy Week, um, Holy Tuesday. And uh, go read those parables, Matthew 24 and 25. Go read those and just go see what Jesus was saying to his disciples through all these um, stories. And pass a couple of them down to your kids while you're at it. And, um, and just keep the faith and stay alert and let's stay strong. Okay, I'm going to pray to end our time and I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. Lord, thank you so much for this time. And thank you that we just get to think about you and really just dive into what you were doing and why you were doing it. And Lord, it's just amazing to me that we can open up your scripture. And sometimes when you read it, it can look like you're just looking at something that you don't think you're ever going to be able to understand. Or what is the meaning of this? And then God, when we ask you, when we say, Lord, help me to understand this, help me to know what you're trying to say through this, that you will send revelations to us. And so I pray that every single time we approach your word, that we know that you have something for us. You have great wisdom to impart to us. You want to give our, bring our hearts peace, God, and that you want us to focus on loving you first and foremost, and then loving our neighbor as ourselves, loving those created in your image as ourselves. Um, and just as much as we love you, God, you want us to be loving people who understand that we have direct access to you and that, um, that your ways are the best ways and that nothing in this world, um, no, no, no formula, um, no method of happiness that is outside of you will ever bring to us what you have given us through what you did on the cross and through the promise of eternal life. And so God, just be with us this week. Help us to keep thinking of you. Help us to keep praying. Um, help us to keep reading scripture and help us to keep loving others well. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Okay. Bye everybody. Thank you so much for watching and we'll be here tomorrow. Day three, Holy Week. I can't remember who it is right now, but I will be here. Um, and it's, it's just going to be great. It's going to just be such a wonderful week of learning. So like, we hope that you join us back here. Okay. Bye.